What format am I even telling this video in? I don't know. Hey, what up, it's Tessa. Welcome back to my channel. Today, earlier, I was having a thought. I have many thoughts. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have something like 60,000 thoughts a day. It's completely irrelevant. I'm just kind of rambling. When you're starting a YouTube channel, you put a lot of time and energy into thinking about what kind of content am I going to create? What are my videos going to be about? And I have zeroed in on that a bit. Uh, obviously, that is going to be subject to change throughout my entire life. But what I realized was that I was missing an element, and that element is me. The more that I film and the more that I get into this, the more I realize some of these videos I make are going to be purely for me. There's a good chance that I end up with memory disease. I've always been crazy about taking photos, trying to remember moments and times in my life, and the essence of who I was and who I embodied at certain chapters and certain stages of my life. I'd say that I really started getting into this when I was 20. I kind of realized, okay, I'm not going to be young forever, I'm having a lot of fun and I want to document this. So I started a pretty intricate journal, just writing down all of the fun and crazy times that I had had and yeah, just the essence of who I was at that time in my life. And <laughs> to be honest, I haven't really looked back on it yet, but I'm glad that it's there. There was a time in 2018 where I tried to do something kind of like this, where I sat down in front of my camera and wanted to uh, video journal of stories that I had to tell, but it just, it just didn't feel natural. It was like I was staging everything I was saying to the camera. My voice felt, oh, if I think my voice feels unnatural now, geez, two years ago, it was really, really uncomfortable. I ended up filming maybe two or three stories and then just put it away. But since 2018, honestly, I haven't done anything to document this specific chapter in time in my life. And if I'm honest, it's a really fucking good time. When I was younger and I would think about what age would you like to be if you could just pick an age and, and be there forever, I thought 26 because I would likely be established in a job, I would maybe have a partner, probably not have kids yet, uh, have a lot of financial freedom, be able to travel, to do all of these things. And sure, at 26 I had those things accessible to me, but 27, man, I think it just keeps getting better. Being this age and feeling where I'm at, where I've come in my growth, what I've learned from all of my life lessons, just sitting back and reflecting, it made me think, what little tidbits would I tell to my younger self if I could? So here's 27 pearls of wisdom to my younger self. I am going to do my best to do this in chronological order, but I don't know if that's the way that it's gonna come out. So the first thing that comes to mind is something that I would tell, I believe, my four or five-year-old self. Tessa, when you come across a open can of pop and a packet of chips that's sitting on a park bench table, looks really enticing and yummy and you wanna eat it, don't. You're gonna get stung by all of the wasps swarming around it. That's what those are. And it's gonna scar you for life. I'm now 27 years old and still sometimes tell people that I'm allergic to wasps because that's easier than explaining that I am so ungodly, irrationally afraid of them. Lesson number two. This one is a lesson in sunscreen. <laughs> I used to babysit or nanny for, I suppose, these girls when I was 13 years old. And we would do things like, I don't know, play on the trampoline, run through the sprinkler, play PlayStation, go down to the pond. We do lots of fun things. And there was a day when we were geared up to go down to the pond. Putting sunscreen on. Putting sunscreen on. Packing our bags, blah, blah, blah. Get down there, play around for a couple hours. And then when we get back, the little girl's telling me that her back kind of hurts and I go have a look at it, and there was an area, yeah, about that big, that uh, was the cutout in the hole of the back of her swimsuit that I neglected to put sunscreen on. Oh my God, it just looks like a, a bright red piece of pepperoni or something, the poor girl. 
Put sunscreen everywhere. You can never have enough sunscreen. Number three. I don't even know how I would begin to tell my 10, 11, 12 year old self to not worry about what other people think and not worry so much about your body image. Because when I was that age and in the thralls of that, I don't know if there's any other way that I could have evolved through it. But what I would want myself at that age to know is that a lot of what you're experiencing is because of how your mom perceives the world. She puts a lot of weight on social judgment and what people think and how well she's liked and in her own body image. And know that that's not yours to keep. You might carry that with you for a little while, but later on in life, that is something that you shed because those are not your woes to work through. All right, thing number four. tell my eighth grade self to just talk to and hold his hand like I was dating this guy or I should say I was dating this guy basically all we did was text we even had lockers next to each other at school and would hardly ever make eye contact like dude you were into each other talk to the guy ask him how his day is how his family is get to know what he likes to do in his spare time what is he interested in learning what are his aspirations in life? <laughs> Don't just text and say that you like each other. Like, this is so fucking weird. Just like, stand confident and, and go, go forth with that. Okay, moving on to number five. Sneak out. Or, wild thought, have an open conversation with your parents about where you'd like to go and who you'd like to hang out with. There's a small chance that they might be on board if you give them full and open honesty with the lens of, I'm doing this with your permission or without. Explain to them that these are experiences you desire to have and you don't want to sneak around their back to do them. Be very curious to see how that unfolded as an angsty 15 year old. Moving on. All right, six. a bitch. There's every chance that she has turned into a great human in high school specifically. Fucking toxic. Get away from it. She is simply a product of her alcoholic parents and her broken family. Using defense mechanisms and language that she picks up there and you're not going to be heard in that relationship. Or if you're going to stay in it, stand your fucking ground and see what happens. Invest more time into your relationship with Hannah. She's good shit. And she is the one person now who has stayed true to you through thick and thin. She's good shit. Okay, number seven. Love your siblings so much. So much of the hatred is in your head. You make it up, you feed into it. I don't know if this is necessarily an avoidable or should be an avoidable part of development in childhood, but know that it resolves. And in your adulthood, you've got a good relationship with your brother and with your sister. They're good humans, just like you're a good human. And the sooner you realize that and the sooner you start being on their team, the better. Number eight. Don't give up on learning how to do a backflip. You have so many good teachers at your disposal. Learn how to do a backflip. It'd be really cool. Cause right now you're 27 and you can't do a backflip. I'm not gonna say it's lame. I'm not gonna say it's cool either. Nine. When told you that thing, you should know that you handled it really appropriately. Your relationship, yes, eventually does fizzle like many friendships do, but know that you learned a life lesson, she learned a life lesson, and even though there may have been feelings hurt, 
I don't really think there was a way to encounter that situation without having feelings hurt. Don't let it weigh heavy on you. Number 10. Consider trying yoga younger. I know there was at least one opportunity, if not more, when you were, say, 13-ish years old, where you had the opportunity to practice yoga and instead of trying to embrace it with an open mind, you really met it with a lot of resistance like, oh, this is slow and boring and stupid, fast forward through the video, dumb. No. Give yoga a little bit more of a shot. Just kind of curious, where would my practice be now had I dove into it eight years sooner? Who knows? Moving on to number 11. There are multiple occasions in which I could warn my previous self of falling outs that were going to happen with friends, but those are lessons that were very valuable and I really think the only advice that I would give to myself is that when the blowouts happen, because they will, remember that the only thing you can control is your reaction. That little piece of advice there, the only thing you can control is your reaction, that is the one piece of advice I would give to myself if I had to choose it over anything. So vitally important. Take distance from heated situations and come back into them with a level head. Have unheated conversations. See the conversation from the other person's side and present it from yours. And if you don't get anywhere, know that you tried and leave it at that. So much of this reflecting has me thinking, what if, where would I be had I started blank earlier? This just warning is a little bit of a sidebar. And I was thinking that the past few days about my YouTube channel and if I'm honest with myself, looking back to when I was like 20 or 21, I think that's the first time I ever actually thought about starting a channel. I don't think I was equipped. I don't think I had good coping skills. I think it would have crumbled. I think it would have started and I think I would have either lost motivation and never picked it back up. Or if I did start to gain some type of following, I would have been crushed by the negativity. There's zero chance that I would have survived it. So. Everything happens in timing for a reason. This is actually where I'm going to stop the video this week. As soon as I finished recording, I realized it was way too much footage to make into one video. So tune back in for the next 12 or 13 or however many pearls of wisdom are left. Bye!